In this video, we're going to take a look at the basic laws of limits. And then near the end, we'll also uh, look at how we can put all of these laws together in order to compute the limit of, say, a problem like this. So let's go ahead and take a peek at our first laws of limits. So basically, the laws of limits uh, give us ways that we can handle certain situations uh, when we start combining functions. And most of these laws uh, have a couple of assumptions built into them. They assume that you know the limits of certain pieces that are being put in together. So for these first few, I have two functions, f and g, and I know the limit of f and I know the limit of g. According to my first law here, it says that if I'm looking at the limit of adding these two functions together, that I simply take their corresponding limits and I add those together. In much the same way, if I take the two functions and subtract them, and I want to know about that limit, then all I have to do is subtract the limits. And the last one says if I have a function multiplied by a constant and I'm looking for its limit, then I simply multiply the limit of the function by k. So you can see in all of these situations uh, that things work pretty intuitively. If I'm adding functions, I'm adding limits. If I'm subtracting functions, subtracting limits. And so the real important part about these limit laws is that they take a complicated problem and allow us to look at individual pieces. So for example, rather than looking at the entire problem of the limit of f plus g, I essentially just have to know the limit of f and I have to know the smaller problem, the limit of g. And if I could figure out both those problems individually, then I can take the answers to those problems and just add them together. So these limit laws are actually pretty powerful in allowing us to look at pieces of the entire problem. Now this isn't all of our limit laws, we got some more, and they handle some other situations. So these other laws are the product, quotient, power, and root uh, law for limits. In the product rule, it says if I multiply two functions together, I'm looking for their limit, then I take the limit uh, of both their individual limits and multiply them. If I'm looking at the limit of two functions being divided, I divide their limit. If I'm looking at the limit of a function raised to a power, I take the limit and raise it to a power. And if I take the function uh, inside of a root, and I want to know that limit, then I can basically take that limit to the root. So again, these things work very intuitively. The operations of how the functions are being put together is also what we'll do with their individual limits. Now there are a few extra restrictions in some of these laws, and they just basically make sure that uh, all the other rules of mathematics are being followed. For example, in the quotient rule, we definitely uh, take the quotient of the two limits, we divide them, uh, but we can only do this as long as the bottom limit is not zero. That just, you know, uh, provides a way uh, to make sure we are not dividing by zero at any time. Uh, for our power rule and our root rule, we want to make sure that n uh, the power or the index, is a positive integer. So again, in all of these situations, it will allow us to break up a much larger problem and just look at the limit of the individual pieces. Now, you may be worried at, at this point saying, okay, that's great, but I still have to figure out what the limit of, say, f and g are. And, and how could we go about doing that? You know, this basically gives us a way to break stuff up, but not necessarily find the limit of those individual pieces. Well, there are a couple of basic limits that you can add to these laws that will allow you to solve a few problems. And these are the limits of an identity function and the limits of a constant function. So in the first one, it says that if you're taking the limit of the identity function x as x approaches a value a, you essentially get a. For a constant function, as you take its limit as x approaches uh, a, you get k. To understand both of these limits and how they work, it's probably best to look at their graphs. So for the first one, uh, the identity function x is basically a line with a slope of 1. And it's called the identity because every time you plug in a number, you get that same number back. So you know, plug in 5, I get 5. Plug in 6, I get 6. And so if we're looking at the values of this function, as we're choosing things closer to a, well essentially I'll keep getting values around a. And I could get arbitrarily close to it. 
Therefore, if I'm looking at its limit as x approaches a, then it must equal a. Now the other function, our constant function, this is basically a horizontal line at k. So no matter where I look at this line, its y value is always k. So as I'm looking at uh, choosing x values around a, well basically it will always be k on the, the, the y values. So I can use these basic limits along with my limit laws and actually compute uh, some more complicated limits. Let's go back to our example and see how all of this fits together. So I want to figure out what is the limit as x approaches 4 of x squared minus 1 all divided by the square root of 4x. So I'm going to start applying these various laws to look at the limit of individual pieces. And we'll basically break it down to the point to where I can use those basic, basic laws and uh, get the individual limits and see what we can do. So the first law I'm going to use is the quotient law. That says I'm allowed to take the limit of the top and I'm allowed to take the limit of the bottom. So this breaks down my work by quite a bit. Now I don't necessarily have to worry about fractions, instead I just have to take the limit of the top piece and the limit of the bottom. Now I can use the difference law on top to actually take the limit uh, as x approaches 4 of x squared and also the limit as x approaches 4 of 1. So now I'm taking the limit of those individual pieces. On the bottom, I can use my root law to take the limit as x approaches 4 of 4x. All right, so we've used a few laws so far, and we can use a few more. Already you can see where I'll use one of those basic limits, the limit of a constant. Let's keep going uh, so we can get to a point where I only have to use those basic limits. All right, so if I take the limit of something raised to a power, then I can take the limit of that function, and whatever answer I get, I'll raise that to a power. Now this one's pretty much uh, down to its basic part, so I'll leave this as 1. And let's see, let's grab the bottom. So I have the square root, and if I take the limit of a constant multiplied by a function, then that'll be the same as the constant multiplied by the limit of that function. Okay, so by applying these different laws, I've essentially have started to look at the limit of individual pieces of this function. And I've kept applying these laws over and over until I've gotten to a point to where I can use some of those basic ones. You can see in this piece I'm basically taking the limit of the identity function. Same with this part down here. Up here I'm taking the limit uh, of the constant function. So let's take care of all of those individual pieces and see what we get. So if I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 4 of x, according to my basic limit, that's equal to 4. Of course, that's being squared. The limit of my constant function is the same as that constant, so 1. Now on to the bottom. This is that identity function, so it's approaching 4. Therefore, my limit is 4. So it allows us to finally plug in numbers for all of those individual limits. And you'll notice that I've taken away a lot of that limit notation because I've essentially, you know, done the limit. To finish this problem off, we basically just go through and evaluate all of these numbers. So I have 4 squared, 16, 4 times 4 on the bottom, square root of 16, so 15 over 4. So I could say that this is the limit of my original function. And you can see that it all comes from taking those basic limit laws and breaking it up all over the individual pieces.